So we had some great books. We wanted to know how publishers decide what to publish. So we asked our film crew and our filmmaker to find some representative companies across the gamut and to ask them that very question. And so what we'd like to show you now is the result of that work. I mentioned earlier five hours of videotape condensed into about five minutes and what a five minutes it is. So I hope you enjoy Pros 2009 Publishers on Publishing. I think for all of us in publishing, loving books goes back to childhood. Um, we couldn't imagine a life without books or a world without books in whatever form they take. We once had this linear path to market where we just like let the book loose onto the world and people bought it. Now we, uh, you know, we, we release it and it goes off into uh, you know, the archives of aggregators, it goes into our own online publishing platform, it can be uh, licensed any number of ways. There's the print version. The print version eventually will go into a print-on-demand version. Well, I have to, have to say there's something special about the, uh, about the book itself. Um, the electronic format isn't, isn't quite so uh, appealing, is it? You can't, quite, you can't bring it into the bathtub with you. Or you can, unless you drop your Kindle in the bathtub, and then it's not so good. I am a great lover of books. I've got a large library myself. Um, but. I have to say, I love reading on my Kindle, too. In some ways, the House of Elsevier goes back to the days of uh, Galileo, because the original House of Elsevier was Galileo's publisher for his last book. Last year, Procedures Consult won the uh, Electronic Product Award. Uh, and I think Procedures Consult is a, a great example of the type of innovation uh, that we strive for. Our electronic entry this year is a product family called Interact Elsevier, which takes anatomy to a new level. It's a three-dimensional product. There is a web-based version and there is an in-classroom version where the, um, the anatomy actually spins in front of the students and effectively provides the ability to do virtual dissections um, on uh, a, virtually as opposed to on a cadaver. It's, it's a really unpredictable business, but the one thing that has been a constant throughout all of it has been this, you know, the, the, what should be an intimate relationship between an author and an editor. You know, I mean, there are, there are a lot of relationships like that that last, you know, decades longer than an average marriage. The trait that when I, when I speak with um, students who are interested in getting into publishing that I think is most important and most neglected is stamina. I think it's true that you have to have a tremendous amount of energy and you have to be so committed that you're willing to give a lot of your life to it. This was a period where people were publishing constantly and where the, the battles of democracy were fought on the pages of newspapers. So that is, is a fantastic part of this book and I think is a real, um, a real reminder of the fact that a republic needs voices. Many years from now, what we're doing now is going to look very different. You know, it's already looking very different. You can't open the newspaper without reading about the Nook or reading about an author selling his e-rights to Amazon or, you know, literally in, in a period of a month, you'll have developments that 10 years ago, you know, would have been, you know, a radical development that would have been the biggest thing in six months' time. There was actually speaking to a chemist uh, describing this concept I had and he said, um, you're basically wasting my time unless you can get me an impact factor. And he didn't pull any punches, he basically said, go away and think about it and come back to me when you've got a better publishing model. The Wires model, it's trying to do a couple of things at least. So first of all, it's recognising the importance of interdisciplinarity and that's really its central ethos and I think it's 
the only publishing model of which I'm aware that, that really does that um, in such an overt way. But it's also trying to publish um, very high quality review material in such a way that uh, it's extremely visible to the scientific community. Yeah, I think another one of our entrants uh, this, this year that is I think striking for various reasons is um, the Encyclopedia of Protest and Revolution. I think it raises the question of how publishers tackle uh, reference in this world of Google and Wikipedia. And, and certainly part of what I think we have to offer is something that's uh, in far greater depth and rigor and peer-reviewed. With our new platform, our new technology, uh, all the infrastructure we put in place in the last five years, technology is no longer a limiting factor. We can innovate as fast as the community and the marketplace wants us to. Would you agree with that? Robert? Oh, absolutely. You know, we're much more efficient, able to keep up with the business pace, um, being in the uh, the internet era right now. And, uh, we couldn't do that before because we didn't have a platform. We didn't have the, the technology base that we have today. A-C-S! So to be recognized by one's peers is, is very, very, very gratifying. But what I think is unique about our publishing program is the way we're very much rooted in the Southwest. Uh, we were founded out of the Anthropology Department at the University of Arizona, uh, which saw a need for greater publishing about Southwestern anthropology and archaeology specifically. From that, we've grown to look at uh, fields, as I said, that are significant to, to our region. So Inland Fishes of Greater Southwest, much like um, Foods of Association, is extensive in its coverage. It covers everything from geology to climate to topography to conservation issues. It even includes a, a fish identification guide. It's great. You know, you have this, the thingness of the book, the smell, the feel, the texture, and so forth. I obviously have an enormous affection for the physical book, but um, that, I, I can't let that cloud my vision about where our, the publishing industry is headed. And I think that one of the challenges for us right now is that we simply don't know to what extent e-books are going to grow as a, uh, as a format. It's kind of inherently fun and exciting, and if you can't, if you can't, um, Kind of get excited by this intersection of research and ideas and the marketplace, then, um, then you, maybe you don't have a pulse. I don't know. <laughs>